Great. Uh, it's a great pleasure uh, to join you this morning at this very auspicious occasion, uh, the inaugural uh, Data Fest Africa. Uh, first, let me apologize that I'm not live on site. Uh, I'm out of town, uh, but my heart is with you. I want to congratulate the organizers uh, for this visionary effort to, uh, to further amplify the need for data centric professionals as we embrace the opportunities and the possibilities of the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, so it's beyond a slogan now to say that data is now a factor of production as important as, as land, labor, and whatever other factors may be. Uh, I strongly believe that we need more sessions like this and kudos to the organizers uh, for making this happen. I celebrate your good work. I believe that platforms like this will help us to inspire more people to pursue this path. Uh, like the African proverb, one of the Af popular African proverbs says, uh, if you want to go fast, you go alone. But if you want to go far, you go together. Uh, and I think the old essential African spirit of Ubuntu is what is coming to play here. Uh, and Ubuntu means I am because you are. You are because I am. So what that means is that when we uh, you know, when we connect together, we can leverage each other's advantage, and that can help us individually to drive our path. And of course, with bigger consequence or domino effect on the prosperity of all, and of course, the well-being and uh, the welfare of all. Uh, as a person, I believe that data will be critical to driving productivity, value creation, welfare within the continent. Uh, because it's going to address a lot of infrastructural gaps, uh, help us to explore a lot of homegrown use cases. Of course, raise more high earning talent, which translates into you know, better lives for people. And of course, the long term play there is gross domestic product, which is a measure of the total goods and services produced in a nation at a time. Of course, in doing that, we make uh, our nation better and our people more prosperous. Uh, so this morning, I've been tasked to run a keynote uh, to speak on building uh, the African data ecosystem. You know, ecosystem is a great word uh, for this conference. I'm sure we can all remember our secondary school biology ecosystem. Uh, ecosystem as a concept is organic, you know, organic interaction, a lot of interdependencies, networks. It's about how we amplify the power of the collectives. It's about how we build multiplier effect into shared value in a quantum that delivers an avalanche of inclusive benefit for all. Uh, and that's why I'm very, very excited about the essential spirit. Uh, so for this session, uh, the way I'm going to run my slide, I'm going to, uh, maybe I should just uh, go straight to sh uh, uh, show my slide and then we just take it from there. Great. So. In terms of my flow, uh, that's uh, the title, uh, Building the African Data Ecosystem, and of course, how you can connect with me on Twitter, and of course, uh, uh, DSN, uh, Data Scientist Network, which was formerly known as Data Science Nigeria. Um, so I'll just, uh, that's DSN underscore AI underscore network. So let me just go straight into the structure of the conversation. Uh, so for this conversation, I will have a short intro and then, of course, I'm going to talk about building the ecosystem starts with you. And I'm going to share my personal story. Then I'll talk about some ecosystem trends on the continent. And then I'll talk about what does it take to be an ecosystem for impact, uh, talking from what I've learned and known through the work uh, we've done at DSN, Data Science Nigeria or Data Scientist Network. So let's go straight into personal story. I believe this is very important. Uh, you know, this is a keynote where we're meant to inspire ourselves, motivate ourselves to go further and further. And I'm going to use some key milestones in my own career path to let you know, you know, some critical consideration in building an intentional career path, which can become an asset to the ecosystem. Um, you know, I have different approach to defining who I am, but I like to see myself as a computational social scientist. What does that mean? I use the power, computational power, whether data, data science, machine learning, computer vision, geospatial AI, to understand social behavior, whether it's in innovation, whether it's in marketing, uh, whether it's in partnership, or whether in 
sustainability, which is a new area where I play. How do we use AI to solve social problems? And of course, if I look at my evolution, I think there are about 10 milestones I, was, I will speak to. And the reason for this is to inspire you that your data journey must lead to specific impact. So the first, I call it from data to revenue. It's not just enough to be a great data analyst. Wherever you work, it must be established that you're able to use your data to drive revenue. You know, this was uh, my humble self in 2013. Uh, when I won a Yellow Manager Award. And what did I do? I built a customer value and risk management framework uh, based on personalized precision algorithm, which led to multi-billionaire revenue and for which I got a, a, a due recognition. And then you must turn data to solutions. Data must not just be numbers, whether uh, in images or videos or audios, you must be able to bring them together, organize them in a way that they solve specific problems. And that's what I did in 2014, 2015, when I got my first US patent in data product. And the same also won me top 100 global data innovator in 2020 um, by business of data. That's Corinium, uh, one of the global uh, leading organization in data in the world. So they, the patent is all about social pricing, personalized pricing using algorithm. And this is based on the privilege of working on the largest consumer database in Africa, uh, having served both in South Africa and Nigeria, having access to such rich data that allows me to understand behavioral pattern uh, and dynamics uh, to be able to use that to understand what that could mean. Of course, from data to industry application, as a data scientist, you are most build capacity beyond your industry. And that's why I said industry applications. And one of the platforms that allows you to do that is Cargo. Now we have Zindi in Africa. It allows you to be hands-on even as a professional because what normally happens is that as you evolve as a data scientist, or as a data analyst, or as a business intelligence professional, your title will change. The last time I had anything data in my title was 2014 when I was general manager, uh, uh, business intelligence and analytics. After that, it was more applications, applications. How do you use it? So the implication is, as you go higher in your career, you must remain hands-on. You must not lose touch with the opportunity to work with real data set. And that's what I do uh, occasionally on cargo, working on different industry data, image data, video data, prediction data from different industries to remain in the cutting edge. Of course, from data to knowledge advancement is also very important as a professional in building your career path to also consider the possibility and the opportunity to translate your learning into knowledge. Uh, this is very, very important. For me, in my career path, it became evident that I need to be able to translate a lot of things that I was learning into, into academic framework because it was becoming very important that I must be able to, uh, you know, uh, be able to capture what I'm learning in frameworks. And that explains why I had to take two years sabbatical to pursue my PhD, uh, you know, uh, to really be able to contextualize a lot of things I've done in the industry with the right framework, principle, philosophy, in a way that can allow me to contribute to knowledge in a very structured way. And of course, I've contributed to over 20 peer-reviewed academic papers. I, I present papers at conferences and all that. Then data must also take us to the level of nation building, you know, where we see data as a catalyst for solving social problems. I have the privilege of leading the Nigerian COVID-19 response using mobility data and advanced big analytics uh, to support government intervention. Uh, it was, for me, this was quite emotional and fulfilling working with Nigerian Governors Forum uh, and working with all the 36 states to build vulnerability model across the states uh, to understand the epidemiology in terms of how it's gonna move. You know, making real big data work in solving real problem. Of course, this work became a global case study and GSMA, the Global Association of Telecoms op Operators, amplified it for publication uh, uh, by Cambridge. So everything I'm showing you, I'm providing hyperlinks so when you get a slide, there are hyperlinks down so that you can click it. When the age of Google, you can Google everything. 
And of course, one moment that is also very important for me is from data to AI for social good. Turning data into something that can be of benefit to everyone, particularly those that may not have advantage. And I was able to achieve this in 2020 uh, through the work we did at DSM, working with Mastercard Foundation uh, during COVID uh, to build a learning, adaptive learning platform with robust recommendation engine that was able to deliver learning via SMS and low internet for 2G feature phones uh, for 8 million students. For me, this was a, a, a very impactful transformation that was using response modeling, uh, profiling, engagement, dynamics, all on SMS, piped into a very robust AI engine to deliver learning. Uh, this won us uh, UNESCO top 100 AI products of 2021. You can Google that. We're very proud of this. Uh, we're able to register Nigeria's name on a global platform. Of course, data must also lead to advocacy. How do we use data to help government to make decisions that are critical to the welfare of every one of us? So I also play in this space where you know, critical stakeholders, government, private sector, ensuring that the issue of data usage, data for decision making, data for governance are amplified at scale. And of course, uh, from data to global recognition, I've been able to present the work we do in Nigeria, Africa, at the highest AI conferences, the World AI, uh, New Rips, uh, these are the two highest AI conferences or data conferences in the world, letting the world know what we do in this part of the world is very important for credibility. And for us, it opens opportunity for several students from Nigeria uh, to begin to get all the links and all the opportunities they need. And of course, it has also led to my work from Data to Impact Award, which was a great privilege to be recognized uh, by the African foremost uh, you know, learning AI community, that's uh, Deep Learning Daba uh, 2019, as, um, as the most influential AI expert on the continent. It was quite humbling. And of course, uh, this also comes with responsibility to do more. So what are the key conclusions of my part work? I impact career path uh, with distinct milestones. It's not just coding, writing statistics, impact, impact, impact. And your career must be characterized by in, you know, specific interventions of impact that demonstrate to your employer or demonstrate to yourself or to the community that you are adding a value that is improving the welfare of all. Own your career and be passionate to drive it. It's yours to own and drive it. Don't let someone drive you. Drive it and drive it passionately. Intensity and depth will win in the long term and is not hype. We're in a generation of hype, how you can package your CV, how you can package yourself on social media. But ladies and gentlemen, real stuff requires you to be intense, to have depth, I mean, to really be hands-on. Forget all the hypes, all the videos on social media. You know, uh, you've got to get what it takes to operate at the global level. Find your space and be best there. And always know something about everything within the data space. This is important. Why you specialize, also understand a little about everything. Then validate yourself at the highest and global level. And that's why I would encourage you, be on Kagu, be on Zinde, write great papers, be at the greatest conference, build products. This world is a global village. So let's get abreast about some things that are happening within the African ecosystem uh, to see how the continent is evolving when it comes to the power of interdependency, interlock, and how we're leveraging each other's capability at an African level to inspire you. This is a keynote to inspire you on what you can also start doing in your space, whatever you find yourself. This is my summary of the African AI data, data science, learning research ecosystem. You can see a lot of the players from Black in AI to AIMS. You know, you can see learning communities, platform owners, uh, you know, advocacy groups, learning communities, uh, like DSN, like Gaussen in Senegal, uh, like AI Saturdays uh, in Nigeria and across many parts. And of course, Black in AI being the epicenter, of course, deep learning in Daba as the ultimate uh, connection for Africa. So, you know, get a slide and check the details. Uh, this is a, a, another format of it, of how the African uh, AI community is structured. And of course, we've seen some great success when it comes to startups in Africa. This was a report published by AI Expo Africa and Alliance, uh, we showed about 75 plus ventures that are using AI as an AI force organization. So things are emerging, things are growing along various levers, 
driving value. So there's a lot of opportunities, there's a lot of momentum that are growing on the continent. And of course, the African Union will be releasing AI for Africa by December 2022. Uh, many of us have been part of the journey. And we think that with, 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 with such documentation, it's going to amplify the narrative and of course, get more African nations to start articulating commitment uh, to AI agenda for social good. And of course, in Daba deep learning community and in Daba X in 26 countries, continue to help us to build local talent. For those who do not know, please Google about in Daba. It is such a great platform that is built on the principle of ecosystem on the continent. Uh, this was the last in Daba that took place in Tunisia. A uh, great time to meet over 40 Nigerians who are there. I know some of them will also be at this event where we were able to connect global best practices, emerging learning, connect Nigerians in the diaspora, shape agenda through the power of networking. That's what ecosystem is all about. If you want to build, we must stretch ourselves, connect, connect, and learn together with the continent. Of course, the power of Afrocentric ecosystem building is also apparent through best practice sharing. I will you an example of how the work we've done in Nigeria at DSN was able to support the starting of data science, North Africa and Arabia. You can see the logo. You know, it was directly adapted. You know, and that's how things must work. We must support one another and give the community the momentum to drive growth. This is not a personal asset. This is a community benefit, and we must be driven by that understanding. Of course, DSNAA is doing amazing work. I was there in 2020 when they hosted the biggest hackathon in Africa with about 2,000 people. They had another one this year as well in, in one single location. It was amazing to see that talents are everywhere. Africa is emerging uh, from west to north to east. You know? And then I need to talk about one great product from the African community called the Masakani Natural Language Project for Africa. This is an example of a practical proof of the power of the community, of the power of the ecosystem to solve problems that are unique to us, which no one will solve. The problem of language, digitizing our language in an extremely low resource context is a responsibility we must take. And that's what Master Kenya has done. And you can look at some of the awesome papers they've done, uh, you know, around African speech, a lot of work they've done around name entity recognition for African languages. These are amazing work. And then I need to mention the African Network on Artificial Intelligence, uh, uh, you know, which is funded by Canadian and Swedish governments. Uh, this is a platform for African practitioners, African researchers, you know, with the support of, of University College London to collaborate, to exchange best practices. So it's important for you to know a lot of great stuff happening on the continent uh, to contribute, to be part of it. So what are my reflections from this second part of my presentation? There's a lot of momentum and alignment across the continent in the spirit of Ubuntu. You will remember Ubuntu means I am because you are, you are because I am. So everything we do is for the collective good. Africa is playing a, a central role in global AI supply chain, um, at, especially at the early production phase. Talent is what we are supplying most now. And with the JAPA, you know, we've, we've, we've almost become the talent center of the world. And the implication is we must build more talent. Those that will stay at home and those that will supply the world. And of course, we've seen countries like Egypt, Rwanda, uh, with AI strategies, but African presence in research is still very weak. So we need to do a lot of more work. And that's why I'm challenging a lot of professionals to find reasons to also move into research, those in research to find intersectional industry. Of course, we need to drive for global multinationals uh, to find reasons to stay here and why we begin to look for more homegrown use cases. As I go to the last part of my presentation at this very auspicious data fest, 2022, I'll be talking about what are the ecosystem requirements and what we've learned at DSN, that's Data Science Nigeria, now called Data Scientist Network. What have we learned? The critical imperative to grow a community of learners, researchers, practitioners that can governize socioeconomic development at scale, that can drive prosperity for all. We have a very simple framework that has driven our work the first pillar is what we call knowledge democratization. The second is enablement. Third is supporting platform. 
And last is uh, what is institutionalization. How do we institutionalize? I'm going to go through this very, very quickly in short time. So, and you may be asking, why do I want to use DSN as a reference? Uh, well, this is what I have done in the last uh, five years plus, and uh, the tangible result, which maybe that's where I should start from. Uh, DSN has won Academic Poster Award at the highest AI conferences in the world ahead of many international universities. Uh, this is an example, you can Google it, 21st ACM conference. Uh, DSN has competed at the highest machine learning algorithm competition in the world. Uh, you can see that what we did during COVID. Our work has been recognized by MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, in terms of contributing to open data through synthetic data that we generated. Of course, South African government recognized DSN as number two AI center in Africa ahead of many universities. These are Googleable uh, reports, so you can actually uh, see all of that uh, to, to see why I want to use our work at DSN as an example. Of course, UNESCO Science Report 2020 uh, recognized the work of data science as a proof, homegrown approach to scaling capacity development end-to-end. -end. So I'm gonna to speak to those end-to-end -end dimensions of DSN, of course, DSN has won uh, top 100 uh, AI solutions, uh, you know, under the auspices of UNESCO, uh, putting African names on the global map. And of course, DSN is not just learning, teaching, research. We also translate our work into monetize, we monetize our work so that we remain sustainable, so that we are not depending on sponsors or anything. We prove our work by the quality of consulting that we deliver. And in just a few years, we've done in excess of 10 million US dollars as you know, providing consulting services in AI, data science, machine learning solution for development agencies and several multinationals, some of which you can see on the screen. Now let's look at the ecosystem. And that's why I said I want to use DSN. You know, I've, I've justified why DSN. So I will now go into uh, what are the critical drivers or the critical enablers of building an ecosystem you know, that can facilitate impact. The first thing, like I said, we must be intentional about knowledge democratization. We must create a platform that allows everyone everywhere to learn. And that's what we've done at DSN, uh, releasing the first AI and Python book for kids in Africa in a very cartoon-like, I wrote this, in a very cartoon-like format, get kids to know machine learning, let them know how to code in a very friendly language uh, that they like. And of course, making the book available to teachers across public and private schools, you know, anywhere in Nigeria, as far as my degree, to learn and to see them really apply this knowledge across board because talents are everywhere, you know, and we need to create a platform for that inclusivity so that all can benefit from the benefit of AI for social development. Of course, DSN has learning communities across schools in Nigeria, learning centers across all the 36 states, over 100 learning hubs in Nigeria, and various events like our AI bootcamp uh, that allows better of the best to gather to learn. Of course, our center in Yaba, uh, where people come for free AI classes to help as many people as possible to learn and build capacity. And of course, we're also intentional about women. We cannot build the ecosystem without having special attention for women. So we created Ladies in AI as a platform to support ladies, to learn, to be mentored, to network and build capacity. The second thing is enablement platform. And this talk about the academic part of community or ecosystem building. For high impact ecosystem, it cannot just be about practitioners. We need solid academic and research best practice to be embedded you know, so that our work can be templated and becomes a reference. So at DSN, you know, very solid partnership with University College London. Uh, we do joint projects, we work together. Uh, of course, Ames Kigali, uh, we have partnership, knowledge exchange, University of Lagos. Uh, a lot of research partnerships, and of course, providing opportunity for PhD students in schools to come to our hub to learn. This was something we did for Institute for Mathematics and Physics at uh, Benin Republic. And of course, supporting schools to have access to latest books. For example, we donated uh, books. Every year we do this now, donating books worth 1 million naira to schools. We've done it for University of Lagos, OAU, and UI. And it's based on their participation level and winning our AI School of the Year 
uh, which is a function of number of students that participate in our AI bootcamp, which always have over 10,000 participants starting, and then the best 300, 400 make, uh, make it to our bootcamp. Okay, yeah, so that's that. And of course, one of the areas where academic is also important is how ecosystem can facilitate collaboration. Now, we as DSN, we have a joint research work uh, with two West African universities, with the University of Lagos leading, uh, focusing on AI research and education. You can check it out. It's called Edu AI Hub, uh, funded by Swedish and Canadian government, up to 1.2 million, 1 million uh, Canadian dollars. Uh, you can check this out. So these are things that ecosystem make possible and facilitate. So the third thing is supporting and scaling up. That's another thing that community or ecosystem must be able to do. So what are the examples we've seen? Uh, for us, it's all about we must support the industry with the right talents, get the talents ready to support the industry, get those that want to be startup to have access to angel, investors, uh, visas, and of course, to provide platform to validate competence. And that's what we do with a lot of hands-on projects like Hackathon for Chevron Nigeria, uh, you know, uh, working with KPMG to find talent. And then when they find the talent, they are able to take those talents into their company. And that's why we're so proud of so many of our students across the world today who have gotten jobs through uh, DSN structured learning programs, you know, which has allowed people to build what we call industrial ready skill. And a lot of, uh, some of the organizers, uh, you know, you can see their faces. They've also been great guys. And I think I need to clap for them. They also work with us to help professionals to build industry ready skill or those who want to transit to build skills. So we create platforms like that and they are all free so that as much as possible, we allow people to build the skills they need for the future they desire. Okay, so, and of course, those that want to go into their own private business, we create a platform for incubation where anybody can come to our AI startup lab in, in Ikeja, in, in Yaba, Lagos, and use the platform for free for 90 days. And of course, have access to our technology, our best practices as appropriate at our AI research lab uh, in Yaba, Lagos. And the last thing which is important uh, to facilitate ecosystem impact is we must have practice that focus on policymakers, government, and public good asset. What does that mean? No matter what we've done, no matter, you know, we democratize knowledge, we enable it with solid research, we scale it up by making the talent available and accessible to industries, both as a, as a practitioner, as a researcher, as a startup entrepreneur. We must also be able to contribute to how government is making policies and decisions to support the growth of the industry. And that's a, we call it institutionalization when it lives beyond all of us. And that's one of the areas where we are playing big now. Uh, for example, we are leading the national policy on the use of uh, mobility data from mobile network operator in an anonymized and de-identified way for social good, particularly you know, for disease tracking, for national planning, because the way, you know, for those who are familiar with mobile, uh, you know, what we call CDL, uh, called it a uh, call detail record, uh, as you move between one base station to another, your mobility can be tracked. And the information about those movements can provide insight about how disease could spread among people and not intervene. So we're currently driving a national policy on this, working with Flowminder Sweden and many government agents. You can see the picture of the statistician general who we met as part of this engagement and many others. And of course, you know, we work with Lagos State government around you know, building uh, Lagos State uh, data for decision making, uh, you know, platform for health for the continent. And, and of course, a lot of learning and engagement at scales. As of today, DSN has developed over 40 unique platforms across 36 states and 11 countries in Africa and in UK to drive the delivery of its ecosystem-oriented agenda. And of course, you can see DSN Global Footprints uh, in pictures. And as at May 2022, maybe that's why you, this is the reason why you may be interested in the work of DSN as an example of out of many others, because I'm aware many other great work that also been done by many other people, but this is the one I know. Uh, if you go to academia.edu, which curates all papers in the world, uh, you know, DSN as of May 28, 2022, has had over 10,000 mentions in various academic papers, 
Interestingly, their PhD student doing their research work on DSN ecosystem building approach. You know, how we have been able to build those things I've spoken about, I've just spoken about a few of what we've done. And of course, accountability is very critical uh, using the strength of our board members, global board members who've achieved that. And of course, accountability is key, clear vision and deep sense of purpose. You know, when we started DSN, it was clear. This was not a flash in the pan. You know, uh, myself and my wife were very clear. We're going to give back. We're going to be very intentional. We're not waiting for a sponsor. We're not, we are going to invest our own resources and see how we can help as many talents as possible to find expression. And we document this in our annual report. You can, you know, check that out. Every year we publish our annual report. What we do, every single cobble that comes in, so that there's huge transparency and all that. And then if you want to know more about building world-class career video, uh, I did a video in 2020, 2020, it's still very, very relevant. It's been viewed by over 53, it's, it has had over 53,000 views. Uh, so you can check it out. It's about more than two hours, but it's extremely detailed and practical, and it provides a schematic career building uh, framing for you as a person, so you can check it out and just check it out. And then for those who are seeking for internship opportunity, DSN is starting a unique six months hands-on, project-based and research-focused internship. You want to write three, four academic papers within six months. You want to be part of some exciting, high-impact project that has huge social uh, you know, impact, and you want to learn hands-on. Uh, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can indicate your interest and you can have six month intensive capacity building, particularly those uh, who have finished the NYC or those waiting for NYC and looking for where to build what I call industry ready skills and research readiness to be attractive to global PhDs uh, schools. Uh, these will be something for you. So this will be my final take takeaway, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for listening. Uh, so first is that talents are everywhere. And we must create ecosystems that support opportunity equalization. Uh, and that's why I'm glad about what we're doing with Data Fest, that people can learn, meet new people. Please use this event to meet new people, connect. And of course, for everything you have learned, with great power comes great responsibility. Take it to your community, to wherever you find yourself, and let the cycle of benevolence continue. Career building is not high. No, it's not all those social media, you know, stuff. No, it's intentional and strategic. Where do you want to be in two years, in five years, in 10 years, in 15 years, in 20 years? It is not a sprint, it's a marathon. So you plan it, you are clear. What skill set must I have? What milestone, what impact must I make? What new competence must I build? It must be planned, it must be faced, and it must be rigorous and intense. Number three, AI for social good is very key for us in Africa. For those that want to look into startups, financial inclusion, health, agriculture are areas where we can use AI to improve the quality of lives. And if you want to work in the community, you need big vision, visions that are beyond you. A deep sense of purpose, you know, having a sense that you've been called to do this, that you are in this country for a time like this, to touch lives, to touch destiny and uplift life. We need people who are purposeful, who are not doing community or ecosystem stuff just for short-term gain, to get their name known and all that. I mean, those whose passion and pursuit is how many lives they're able to touch. And this requires a deep sense of sacrifice. I can't tell you the sacrifice we have made uh, in terms of funding, in terms of investment, you know, personal, you know, and all that. It takes all of that. And in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, just take this away if you can't remember everything I've said. Great events do not make great people. Only great decision does. As you leave Data Fest 2022, come out with two, three things you are going to do different to, to add value to the ecosystem. And of course, sometimes it starts from yourself and then it translates to the ecosystem. Get back to cargo to prove your worth in the global platform. For me as a person, if you cannot test and prove yourself on a global platform, compete with others, whether on Zindi or Kaggle, and learn from multiple data sets, I will still see you as a joker. Read more academic papers to be able to deepen your intellectual depth and use case application as you just oppose knowledge from different people. 
practice more coding. Our industry requires sequenced and structured instructions that you must practice again and again. Invest in learning, be intentional about it. Coursera, several DSM free learning are all there. And a lot of our videos of several classes that we've done are there, invest in learning. Build solid mathematics and statistics skills. I do not joke with it. I recognize those that maybe would know code, uh, those who are developers, that is very okay. But for those who want to combine academics or research and high impact industry use cases at the executive highest level, your maths and statistics may be very important. Go for that higher degree if you have a passion for it and it is convenient for you and it is relevant to your career plan. And start your AI venture if you've got that big idea. Don't waste the time, go make it happen. So thank you so much as I will close with this quote is an Ethiopian proverb. It says, a single stick may smoke, but it will not burn. So you need somebody. We all need one another to grow, to build the continent, to make a difference that the world is waiting for. It's all about partnership, collaboration, and community building. We need each other. We need to make that difference. And I believe that this is the time that the continent has been waiting for, for you to be that light wherever you find yourself. It is time to make a huge difference and demonstrate the power of data, data science, business intelligence, data visualization, no code AI, no code development in turning our generation for good, demonstrating the power of data in improving the quality of lives for people in emerging market. So I wish you all the best at this conference and do have a fantastic time. So once again to the organizer, thank you for having me and I wish you all a very great time. Thank you and bye-bye.